So we have some breaking news. Hamas has accepted a ceasefire with Israel. However, Israel has not actually proposed said ceasefire. The ceasefire that Hamas has agreed to is actually coming from Egypt and Qatar. So I want to break down what's going on, why the United States is very frustrated at this time, and why there are hundreds of thousands of people potentially fleeing a part of Gaza, trying to get out of harm's way because they were warned by Israel. I'm going to break all that down in just a moment. All I ask is one thing, it takes two seconds, go ahead, hit that like button if you enjoy these daily updates, and now let's begin. So, yes, it's true. Hamas has accepted a Gaza ceasefire proposal from Egypt and Qatar. But that is the thing. It's coming from Egypt and Qatar. It's not coming from Israel. What Israel is doing is they are preparing the people of Gaza and telling them to get out of harm's way. But I want to show you some other things. Okay, It says, Hamas accept proposed ceasefire agreement. But Israel says it's a softened version. Now, why would Israel say this? Well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, what Egypt and Qatar were proposing is that Hamas uh, releases the, the women, the children, the elderly, and people that need medical attention. According to reports, that's about 33 people. According to other reports, there's still over 130 people that are unaccounted for, which means Hamas would still have 100 hostages if, and only if, all hostages were still alive. But at this point in time, many months down the road, it's very unlikely that 100% of all hostages that they took back on October 7th are still alive. So that's part of the reason why Israel is not wanting to accept this. The other reason why, Israel knows that they have leaders and they have uh, many uh, militants in Rafa. This is where they are planning to attack next. But let me show you this. This is from Reuters. It says, Israel plays down Hamas move on Gaza ceasefire as it hits Rafa. And what they are doing right now is Israel is trying to explain to the United States what they are doing. And so the U.S. has a little bit of a a heads up so we're not shocked once Israel attacks Rafa. But look at this. This is actually from, there we go. It's actually from uh, uh, the AP News. It says, Israel has briefed U.S. on plan to evacuate Palestinian civilians ahead of potential Rafa operations. Well, how are they doing that? Well, this is where things got very interesting. Just look at this video right here. Look at this. New video this morning showing Israel Defense Forces dropping leaflets into Rafah, telling people to evacuate immediately. So they're telling them to evacuate immediately. Get out of Rafah. And they're doing it by an airplane flying over and dropping leaflets over the entire city. Now, what's interesting about this is it's somewhat working, but at the same time as people are trying to leave the city, they are being hit by uh, Hamas when they're trying to go to these uh, some of these like safe encampments. So we're going to see what happens moving forward. But what I can tell you right now is it's not looking good for most of the world. And here's the reason why. Okay, Israel plans to end Hamas. There has been talks in the, in the past about Israel potentially uh, agreeing to a ceasefire. But Hamas would actually have to pretty much give up themselves. They would have to give up all their leaders. They would have to pretty much end the, their whole operation, which they're not going to do. So Israel is going to go where they are, and that is in Rafa. Now... Here's something the U.S. just did. Okay, it says U.S. reportedly suspended a weapon shipment to Israel with with Rafa invasion imminent. We learned this just the other day that there was a, supposed to be a shipment of weapons going to Israel, and the United States suspended it. They stopped it immediately, and for two reasons. Number one, 
Benjamin Netanyahu has not been doing what President Biden was asking. The second reason, why would we send shipments into a, into a potentially a bombing zone? Why would we send all of our equipment there and then all of a sudden it just gets hammered and decimated and it's ruined? We can't use it. There would be a waste on our part and a waste on their part as well. I want to show you one other thing. Okay, because somebody asked me this just the other day. Look at this. It says, why is Israel's plan to invade Rafa are so worrying? Well, I want to touch on this because, it, again, it is worrying what they are trying to do. But look at this. It says, Israel's military has told civilians to move out of the eastern sector of Rafa as a possible prelude to a long-expected attack on the southern Gazan city. The offensive would be part of Israel's campaign to eradicate Hamas. Now, I want to be very clear on something. People were told to get out of out of Gaza, to get out of um, you know, get away from the Gaza Strip, get out of you know, certain parts because that is where they were going to hit. This was months ago, and people started to move, and so they went to they went more towards the south because Israel is hitting the north and coming down. Well, now the problem is Israel's planning to go into Rafa and trying to get rid of Hamas. That's where everybody went. Let me show you this. It says, the on, it says this is the enclave's one remaining safe haven, including more than 1 million displaced people. More than 1 million people have went to Rafa to try to just be safe and get away from all the bombing. Now the bombing is going to follow them. Let me read you one last thing. It says, Israel says thousands of fighters and some leaders of Hamas, which is considered a terrorist organization by the U.S. and European Union, are hiding in Rafah. That's the reason why they are going there. That's the only reason why. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is because of this. We have seen protests and the protest turns into riots. We have seen those for the past week or two. The expectation is if Israel goes and attacks Hamas in Rafah, we are going to see so many more anti-Israeli protests here in the U.S. So what's going on in another, in another country, right, halfway around the world in the Middle East, that is going to impact us here because we are already hearing, you read the, the message boards, you read you know, Reddit, you go on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, you hear so many people saying that if this happens, they're going to do X. They're going to do this and that. And a lot of these start at just simple protests, but the protests will quickly ramp up. Like I said before, the intensity of these protests, they, they are intensifying and it's happening rapidly. So we're going to see what happens moving forward. All I can tell you right now is this ceasefire that Hamas supposedly accepted, Israel says, no, that is not the ceasefire that we agree to. So we'll see what happens. We could have a ceasefire by the end of the day, or at least the initial agreement. But like everyone says, the devil is in the details. And right now, all we have is a ceasefire proposal, but no details. Once we get the details, then we'll know a little bit more as to whether or not this is going to go through or not. So as we get more information, I promise I'll be here every step of the way. I'll fill you in on all the latest news and updates. But that is what we know as of today. So again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.